The scripture that was read earlier from Matthew chapter 10 verses 29 through 31 just as Sister Collins did I will be reading from the New International Version Matthew chapter 10 verses 29 through 31 Are not two sparrows sold for a penny? Yet not one of them will fall to the ground outside of your father's care. And even the very hairs of your head are all numbered. So don't be afraid. You are worth more than many sparrows. I want to talk this morning from the subject, our all-knowing God. Our all-knowing God. God, we thank you and bless you for this service, my second time, releasing your word to be your people on today. Stand tall in the preacher. Anoint me afresh. I pray that you would use me for your glory. Help me to answer some of the unanswered questions that we're wrestling with here in this journey called life. Bless us and keep us. Thank you in advance. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Last Sunday night, a week ago to be exact, Stephen Paddock carried out the premeditated slaying of 59 persons and wounded over 500 from a high-rise hotel suite in Las Vegas. As you know, Paddock also took his own life. Experts say a psychological autopsy is necessary to establish a motive for the attack to determine whether there was a neurological disorder or malformation. Though, Ms. Bills, this was the deadliest mass shooting in modern U.S. history, it was not the first of its kind. Unfortunately, we live with the memories of others. June of 2016, a single gunman opened fire in a gay nightclub in Orlando, Florida, killing 49 and leaving 50 wounded. June of 2015, at the Emanuel African American, excuse me, African Methodist Episcopal Church, Dylan Roof took the lives of nine persons during Bible study. April 2007, a student went on a shooting spree, killing 32 at Virginia Tech. December the 12th, a gunman in Sandy Hook took the lives of over 20 innocent children at Sandy Hook Elementary School in Connecticut. Unfortunately, there are others. However, I think you've heard enough to determine that we live in an evil world. (laughs) And because we live in an evil world, we are told to be ready. It is our responsibility to give our lives to Christ and and to secure our salvation because tomorrow is not promised to any of us. The questions that arise after each of these horrific slayings contended to be a problem, or should I say problematic, in the life of those persons who we call theologians as they try to answer the world's question. Where was God? Is he aware of evil beforehand? And if he's aware, why didn't he do something? We've heard these questions before. We've heard these questions on a national scale, and some of us have heard these same questions with our matters and our private lives. The truth be told, a lot of us have dealt with horrific events in our own homes on the local front. But let me answer first one, and then we'll take a look at what is called the omniscience of God and what that means for you and 
me. Where was God? Charles Stanley, the author of the book, When Tragedy Strikes, answers that question in his book. He contends God is in the same place he has always been, and that is on his throne. He also adds, in this world, you will have trouble. He confirms, Sister Murphy, we will have trouble. God has promised us in his word, tragedy is inevitable, and it will happen. And that also means, Sister Holmes, that we will experience grief, anger, and overwhelming questions. What do we do now? How do we respond to this tragedy? And where is God when this happens? Dr. Stanley says, listen, God's word shows us how to live when tragedy strikes. And we can be assured by his conclusion in John's gospel, chapter 16, verse 33, where Jesus says, I have told you these things, that in me you might have peace. In this world you shall have troubles, trials, and tribulations. The New International Version says, but take heart. King James says, but be of good cheer, for I have overcome the world. The theological word that describes God's all-knowing attribute is omniscient. We get that word from the prefix omni, meaning all. And science, in its original sense, means knowing. Our all-knowing God. Are y'all with me? What does that mean for us in 2017? It, it means this. We, Reverend Glaze, can fully understand that God is aware of our past. He's aware of our present. And he is aware of our future. He knows all that there is to know and all that there will ever be known, God knows. Where can we find this in the scriptures? I wish I had somebody to talk to me. David does an awesome job with this in Psalm 139. I just love it. David, 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 David just, just sums it all up. David says, first of all, you know my down sitting. You know my uprising. Come on, somebody. David says, you know my thoughts even before they come to my own mind. David said, not only do you know my thoughts, you know my uprising, my down sitting, but he said, where can I go that you aren't already there? He said, if I ascend to the uttermost parts of the earth, you are there. If I descend to the lower parts of the earth, you are there too. One of the most respected theologians of all time, Augustine, Augustine uh, said God's foreknowledge does not force things to happen. Get this. He said God foreknows everything that he causes, but he does not cause everything he foreknows. Now that's deep. In other words, God, God, he, Augustine is saying this, and I agree, that God foreknows, y'all with me, everything that he causes, but he does not cause everything that he foreknows. Y'all didn't get that. What he argues is this. He said, we have choices. And sin is committed by evil and man's will and not God's foreknowledge. What are you saying, Pastor? Let me break it down so we can get it. I'm glad you want me to. God knew last Sunday night what this gentleman was going to do. Could he have stopped it? Yes. But the man made a choice. God placed Brother Barnes, Adam, and Eve in a garden. And all they had to do was live happily ever after. He forewarned them not to eat from the tree of, come on somebody. But the Bible says they made a choice. So what are you saying? You need to stop blaming God for evil. Are y'all with me? Though he knows what's going to happen, we've got to understand that he's not the cause of these things happening. Come on somebody. So what do we do when tragedy strikes? I would argue that tragedy either does one of two things. It brings us closer or it drives us further away. I'm not getting any help from this side over here. I said it either brings us closer or it drives us further away. Are y'all with me? But the awesome thing about God is we've got to understand that everything he allows has a bigger purpose and a bigger scheme. I watched the Today Show every morning and I was fascinated the other morning when they showed the gentleman in the hospital bed and the two young ladies who were in the hospital. The gentleman in the hospital said, you know, he said, at that moment, it didn't matter whether you were black or white. He said, all we needed was a helping hand. 
Now, can I talk to you about this awesome God that we serve? Is he will allow something like this to happen so we can understand who our neighbors really are. I wish I had somebody help me. Because if I'm down on my back and my hand is extended to me, I'm not going to judge whether that's a black hand or a white hand or a Jewish hand. I wish I had somebody help me. All somebody needs is a hand up. And God has a way. Oh, I feel this thing this morning of orchestrating his power to show us that we need to come together. This all-knowing God. Sister Henry, does a, uh, Sister Henry Matthew does a great job of this in our text. As Jesus addresses the subject of fear. Now note the transition. He uh, addresses the subject of fear. And I think that's important because now many folk are fearful. Fearful of going into public places. Fearful of coming to church. Fearful of going to a concert because of what's going to happen. Or what they think is going to happen. Well, might, I might be different. And a lot of y'all think I'm a little off anyhow. It's all right. But I'm not going to walk around and spend the rest of my life watching my back and trying to see, oh, peeping and looking who's carrying a gun and who's not. My, my, my Bible says, the Bible says that I have come that you might have life and have it more abundantly. Can I get somebody to help me? Pastor Henry, I think that you're being naive. No, I'm not. I'm living my life aware of one thing, and that is regardless of what happens, God is still in control. If a bullet takes me out, I'm saved, and I know where I'm going. I y'all don't know the heart to me. So when you know that you know, and you're convinced that you know, Jesus said just in the verse part of this, don't worry about a man who can kill your body. But be concerned about men who can kill both body and soul. So he uses this text to help us brimly realize that not only is he sovereign, but he's all knowing. Miss Willie may listen to how he breaks it down. He said, look, are not two sparrows sold for a penny? Ravinia in their culture, sparrows were considered insignificant birds of very little value. In time, you can buy anything two for a penny. You know they're worthless. But our Lord is trying to tell us something. That even though the uh, sparrows are in abundance, I know every detail there is about them. And when one falls to the ground, God knows I wish I had somebody help me. I know when that one bird has fallen. What does that say to us? I'm glad I got somebody to help me. He knows us. And he's telling us that not one thing happens without his approval. Come on, somebody. I don't care what the enemy tries to do to you. You need to know this morning that God has a hedge around you. And Satan can do whatever he wants to do. It. But the enemy can't touch you unless God removes the head. Now, I, I want to tell somebody, in these perilous times we live in, stay behind the head. but I don't think they got it. Sonia, I don't think they got it. He said, take two little birds. I know every move they make. And here you are worried about your bills. I've got everything under control. Are not two sparrows sold for a penny? They're worthless in the eyes of man, but yet he says, I know every move they make. So what are you saying, Pastor? And Sister Mix, I think he's telling us this, that nothing catches him by surprise. The Lord doesn't have any ADT systems in heaven. No burglar alarms going off. Nobody sends him instant messages. He already knows. Can I get somebody to help me? 
but he has already reminded us that he who dwells in the secret place of their own body. God Almighty knows I wish I had somebody else. Shall abide under the shelter of their own body. Knows. Pastor Henry, he knows. Yes. Then he takes it a step further. I'm hot. I don't know what's going on, but he takes it a step further. Listen, he says, even. Y'all got to hear this. Deacons, y'all got to help me. The very hairs of your head are all numbered. If y'all had really gotten that, somebody would be on their feet by now. Can you imagine sitting in front of your daddy, Deacon Brian, and your daddy saying to you, son or daughter, I know how many hair they're on your head. Come on, somebody. That means that he knows each of us in an intimate way. God knows I wish I had somebody here. I've been married to Jacqueline Bell Henry for 30 years. She knows me better than anyone else. But she doesn't know the number of hair that are on my head. My mother is still alive. And at 93, her memory is sharp as mine. She's told me time and time again about that morning on May 2nd, 1965, when I was born in Pender Memorial Hospital. She knows the doctor, Dr. Miranda, who delivered me. She knows I was born 2.33 a.m. in the morning. She knows that I weighed two pounds and three ounces. But she doesn't know the number of hairs that are on my head. Dr. Kevin Brennan is my medical doctor at Mayfield. I wish I had somebody to help me. Dr. Brennan knows and treats me for all the illnesses that I have. Come on, somebody. My oncologist in Chapel Hill knows me. I'll go see him next month, and he'll tell me again that I'm still cancer-free. Those two doctors work in concert together to make sure that I live a healthy life. They know my body, but they don't know how many hairs are on my head. Y'all don't hear me? But there is somebody. You do know him, don't you? Who declares I know the number of hell. And if I know the number of hairs on your head, you ought to trust me to know that I've got your back. When your back is against the wall, you ought to know that since I know that much about it, I know how to provide for you. I know how to take care of you. I am your Jehovah God. I am your provider. He knows. I'm so glad he knows. And the hymn writer said, Jesus knows. Oh, about our struggle, and he will guide us until the day is done. He says, you can buy two sparrows for a penny, but not one of them will fall to the ground unless it's in my father's will. That means he said nothing can happen. Can I talk to some real folks? Can I make the devil mad for me? And can I tell you, you ought to talk back to that rascal? And you ought to tell him that I'm not going anywhere until God's plan and God's purpose has been fulfilled in my life. I wish I had somebody here. Get no devil in hell. Stop what God has for you until your work is finished. Every strand has been pre-counted. Don't y'all think so? He's somewhere calculating now. He knew 
before you. He honored the birth command. Every detail that was to know about you. I'm getting ready to close. And then he said, here it is. Don't you realize that you are more valuable to me than many sparrows? He said, you can put all the birds together, but you are the hallmark of my creation. Psalm 8 says, what is man that thou art mindful of him? Thou hast crowned him with glory, honor, and majesty. Made him a little lower than the angels. But I know there's still someone leaving out of here this morning and you're going to say, I heard the message, but there's things that I still don't understand. Come on and help me, son. Pastor Henry, I've got a list. And if you want me to add your list to my list, I'll tell you there are some things Charles Barnes that still baffled me. There are a lot of things I don't understand. I don't understand why we have to have tragedy. I don't understand why cancer takes the lives of our loved ones. I don't understand why all hammers come in and rob our loved ones of their thinking capacity. I don't understand Sister Shirley Jones, why babies are born deformed. I don't understand why bad things happen to good people. I don't understand why the righteous suffer and those who don't have any regards for holiness just live any kind of way. I don't understand why good folks struggle and bad folks seemingly get along. There are a whole lot of things. I just don't understand. But I do want to close this book by telling you the words of a hymn that says many things about tomorrow. I don't seem to understand. But I know, yes, I know who holds tomorrow. And I know who holds my head. My life is not in 45 hands. My life is not in our brother's head, but my life is in God's head. And I trust him, even when I don't understand it. I trust him to be the sovereign God, even when I can't figure out what he's doing. Concerned about houses and cars, and he's concerned about your heavenly home. 
and your soul, which is more valuable to him than anything that you could ever possess. As we stand all over the house, I know that was a short message today. But he knows. And I'm so glad. I'm so glad. He knows. And I've heard folks through the years talk about what they're going to tell him when they see him. You can hand him all that junk if you want. If you want to ask him questions, just make sure you're not in the same line that I'm in. Because I'm going to tell you to move out of my way. I just want to see his face and tell him thank you. I don't know mad about what didn't happen or what did happen. Bring him my feet touch fire. And I get into the city. My work will have been finished. And that's all that matters, then. I'm not two birds sold for a penny. Nothing happens to them that I'm not aware of. This is what the Lord said. And I know the number of hair that are on your head. And I also want you to know that you mean more to me than to Sarah.